Fatal 9? I don't believe I've heard of it before, actually. Um, I actually don't know anything about Title IX, and I wish I did, so. Is it the sexual harassment uh, title? Or that's Title IV? I can't say that I know anything about that. Nothing. Zero. <laughs> you felt like you had some answers to it. What is Title IX related to, or what's the first thing you think of? Go ahead. I guess given the topic, I'm guessing it's based around like what is considered sexual harassment and what isn't, and all the things that classify are underneath. So related to sexual harassment, understanding what it is and what it isn't? And what, at what point is something an assault rather than just being aggressive? Right, so using some deductive reasoning from what we talked about today. Did any of you have any preconceived notions about what Title IX meant before you got here? I'm completely off, but um, I'm pretty sure it has to do with um, how they appropriate funds for scholarships for some universities versus men versus women. Exactly, and in particular, what area? And I'm not surprised you're thinking of this. Yeah, I mean, I'm kind of biased because I'm an athlete, but... Right. Um, like for usually men's football, usually it takes up like, you know, 40 floor at scholarships and uh, it kind of leaves the other men's sports without a lot of scholarship money. And, uh, you know, women's sports kind of get the, exact, they get the exact amount of money in scholarships, so they have a lot more, uh, I guess, floor at scholarships for their sports. And easier to distribute. And you know that that's somehow related to Title IX is what you were thinking, right? Yeah, I know you guys are going with uh, the sexual harassment and consent route, but I, I knew in the back of my mind that there was a connection. You're absolutely right. And most people, when they hear Title IX, especially if they were growing up in the 80s, the 90s, and the early 2000s, go, oh, women in sports. Here's the goal of Title IX from 1972, and it's evolved. It's to prevent all forms of sex or gender-based discrimination or sexual misconduct. So that term sexual misconduct has sort of taken over the label Title IX. So sexual misconduct fits all of these things we've talked about for the most part, including that sexual discrimination. So we're talking about any kind of discrimination based on sex, gender, or sexual orientation. So that's making sure that you ha don't have discrimination in terms of access to sports um, for males and females, and also based on sexual orientation, which is a much more common topic today, also in sports. In fact, I recently learned a lot about schools trying to figure out how they create locker rooms for people who are transgender because the male and the female locker rooms are not necessarily going to be enough or appropriate. All of that um, relating to this Title IX issue big in colleges. What we've seen since 1972 is we focused all on sports and we forgot about all that other stuff that relates to this notion of sexual discrimination or discrimination based on sex and gender. So they added later to the title topics on sexual, sexual harassment and sexual violence. This is an, an amendment to Title IX in 1990. The law is named after Jean Cleary. She was a 19-year-old Lehigh University, which is in Pen Pennsylvania, student who was raped and murdered in her dorm room in 1986. Her murder triggered a response towards unreported crime on campuses. So um, she was the only daughter of her parents, and they wanted to choose a great school for her. And Lehigh had a beautiful campus, a great reputation. They looked at a lot of schools and said, this one looks like a safe, wonderful place for our daughter. But her parents started to look into Lehigh University and learn more. Um, what they learned is that Lehigh University statistics for sexual assault and for crimes in general were staggering but universities and colleges were not required to post any of that. And the parents said, had we known how many rapes had happened in the dorm room we were putting our daughter in, among other things, we would have never sent her to school here. So they felt that it could be prevented if colleges and universities were required to post that information. So the Cleary Act requires all publicly funded colleges and universities to share information about all types of crimes on campus and our efforts to improve them. So prevention efforts that we have and programs that we have to help students and to provide safety as well as inform the public and the community around campus. There are people living around a campus that could be a dangerous place. So we're now required to publicly inform. Schools must also now, thanks to the Cleary Act, provide support to survivors of sexual misconduct. Oftentimes students think they're on their own. So you find out something happened, something happened to you, 
and you just figure you have to figure it out, get through school, trudge through class, trudge through work, everything you're doing. It's just this really sad thing that happened. You might even be internalizing it, thinking it was your own fault, and it's not the case. We're actually required to help. Consent in California, the yes means yes law, which came into effect January of this year. Any of you know what that meant when you were asked? Go ahead. If they're able to say yes, but not under any form of influence, I'm guessing, that yes, but anything else is not at all. And that yes, is what I'm guessing. Yeah, no, you're good. That's really good. So if someone, first of all, they have to say yes. So it's no longer, it used to be no means no. And we'll hear people still say no means no. And California law decided that's not proactive enough. They not only have to say no, I'm uncomfortable or shake, they have to say, yes, I want to do that. And they can't be under the influence of anything. If someone says, yes, I want to engage with sex in sex with you and they're drunk, they actually don't have the ability to consent according to California law. Yes, Mercedes. Um, what if you say yes and um, after a while you say no and the person pushes and then they're like, oh, they said yes first. And this is ex exact words from the California law addressing exactly what you mentioned, Mercedes. Lack of protest or resistance does not mean consent, the law states, nor does silence mean consent. And this part addresses what you said. Affirmative consent must be ongoing throughout the sexual activity and can be revoked at any time. And I have had more than one instance in which someone has explained to me, yeah, I was fine at first. Yes, we started doing these things. I thought I was going to be okay. I changed my mind. I said no. And so there are different variations on that kind of scenario in which it was a yes, no, yes, no. As soon as the yes is taken away, there's no longer consent. You know, it might not be the easiest conversation to have given uh, the fact that, it, you know, in this incident, in, in the... The, um, hypothetical we're talking about they're you know they've, they've been drinking they're in the moment and they may not want to hear about um, the, the law in the middle in the midst of this but at least for me I'm I'm absolutely the type of person I'd poke in and I'd be like do you know this is the law Mercedes um, for me it's usually when um, my friends and I or like um, a really good friend of mine we like go to uh, the gathering or party, right. it's usually like the person tells you who they like, right? And then you go there planning to have them together. But with this in mind, it's like I would stop it. I wouldn't. I wouldn't necessarily go up and like this is like these other facts. I just get. Hey, do you want to come with me and like get something? Just get them away from that situation and get their head like clear and then see what they're actually thinking at the moment when they're drunk. Right. So. And maybe use Joseph's line, which is if they're liking you tonight, they will probably still like you tomorrow. I think that's a really good point. My understanding of Title IX is that it's a, a clause that deals with um, sexual harassment, uh, sexual misconduct. Gender violence or gender harassment. Bullying or anything related to gender or uh, sex, uh, sexual orientation. Uh, Harassment. Discrimination between sex or gender, uh, dating violence. It prohibits discrimination based on gender, um, sexual orientation. It sets uh, rules and uh, laws that um, outlaw sexual misconduct and how to deal with them specifically. Uh, the Cleary Act was proposed after a, a woman mis named, uh, whose last name was Cleary, was raped and killed in her own dorm room on a campus that was supposedly safe because at the time they didn't have to release public records of what was going on on campus. It's uh, an amendment for uh, Title IX. Uh, the Cleary Act requires public in institutions that, re that um, get federal funding to report uh, crimes that occur on campus to the community as well as to the, the college itself um, and uh, set requires the colleges to have resources available to not only address the problems that arise but also to um, support victims and uh, provide other services as well. Um, sexual misconduct is anywhere from rape or sexual harassment, anything that makes 
either a male or a female feel uncomfortable by something people say or how they feel about being touched or anything like that. Making a lewd statement around someone who, is not, who doesn't want to hear it or being in any way like homophobic or unkind to people based on just their gender or their orientations. Could be anything. It could be uh, unwanted touching. It could be, um, you know, dating violence, domestic violence. It, it, um, it could be sexual harassment. It could be unwanted commentary towards you, or even in your presence. Um, it's basically a, sort of a, a broad term to cover any of the uh, elements that are put in Title IX. Consent is when uh, two people agree to uh, engage in sexual activities and it has to be ongoing. Uh, it, it, it requires a yes, uh, a continuing yes, if uh, somebody agrees consents with somebody and later on they say that they don't want to consent anymore, that um, the other person has to respectfully accept that. There might be less acts of uh, rape or sexual misconduct or um, sexual violence if people are more aware of consent. And with the new yes means yes law that was proposed in 2016, if, if somebody has been had any alcohol or is incapacitated in any way, like asleep or they cannot consent at all. It is not possible to give consent uh, when you are under the influence uh, because that uh, your judgment is impaired. Uh, and I feel like that's great because if your judgment is impaired when, and you can't drive a vehicle or operate machinery when you're under the influence, you shouldn't be able to uh, put your life at risk with something that's very intimate as that and important. I learned the whole um, idea about Title IX. I had no idea what that was until today. Now that I know, I'm going to be more cautious about what I do, what I say, try to help my friends and peers. I didn't know that if you were drunk, you can get charged for uh, sexual assault because uh, I thought that if both sides are drunk, then uh, they are both not really, they cannot really control their um, uh, acts and emotions. Especially learning about the yes means yes, I've learned that I should, it's probably best to like inform my friends about that. You should probably never do anything you shouldn't, that you, unless everybody's had nothing to drink because a lot of bad stuff can happen to you and the other person cannot be okay with it at all. And that's not right. People need to be respected at all times. I think the most striking thing for me was um, learning about the changes in the law at the beginning of this year. Um, and the way that it really did shift the paradigm uh, in terms of consent. This changes the way that I'll personally uh, behave um, and it will change the way that uh, I view the behavior of my friends, colleagues, friend, uh, associates, what have you. Um, we really do have to be very proactive and make sure that we are absolutely 100% sure that people are consenting and that they're not impaired and that they're capable of giving consent. I didn't know that you can reach out to so many different people about um, sexual harassment or anything that goes on in college like about sexual violence or dating violence and also I did not know about the new law yes means yes and uh, the terms that goes into that and I feel like I, could, I would use it in my college experience and I would actually take action upon the stuff that I have, that I know. What I didn't know was that this, the new law was passed, the yes means yes, in California. Um, what this did for me was it kind of actually made me feel a little bit more assured knowing that laws are becoming more uh, progressive and um, in the sense that they're not so much like here's how to go about it after it happens. It's more of how can we prevent it as opposed to how can we hide it. At Moorpark College you can contact your professor, your dean, or the Tyson 9 coordinator. Professors, uh, deans, or the Title IX coordinator, that's a new one. Um, basically any adult that's in 
charge like anyone that you see that's involved in school you can just tell them uh, you can contact your professors your deans the title IX coordinator I think that uh, if you experience any threatening sexual behavior or sexual assault um, you should contact definitely the a staff member that you feel most comfortable with because uh, I believe most of the staff members here and professors, counselors, and uh, any other staff members should be trained on who to go to, at least be able to point you in the right direction of who, how, who to speak to and how to get help from. And I think it's important that it's someone you feel comfortable with so you're able to tell them these things and you're not afraid to be open and honest with them about what's going on. You should talk to a professor, a dean, or the uh, Title IX um, officer. You should contact um, a professor, a dean, or the Title IX director, or anybody in the health office. I've heard there's counseling and people you can reach out to for help.